going on guys back in another video it's been a little over a week since ahsoka wrapped up and to take a look at it now that it's finished and give it a different opinion than what we gave it during all the hype i want to talk about the show overall how it did if it lived up to its expectations and what it says for the future of disney star wars so starting off i enjoyed the show i thought the show was better than I expected it to be. But you could chalk that up to me just being negative about Star Wars when it comes to Disney. Either way, I enjoyed it for the most part. There are a lot of issues with it, but are we being nitpicky? Is it really as imperfect as we think? I mean, that's all subjective. But yes, I think there are issues with it. But, you know, as a Star Wars fan, I don't want perfection. I just want effort. It left me with a pretty good feeling. To give an explanation as to what about it I enjoyed most, we can start off with, it felt like a continuation of Rebels, which I enjoyed Rebels for the most part. It just gave you that vibe of like actual Star Wars versus the jumbo garbage we've got from live action Star Wars in recent times. There is one elephant in the room and I think that Episode 5, the episode with Anakin and the flashbacks, surpasses everything else in the show, at least in my opinion. I feel like that episode stole the spotlight from the entire show, and I feel like it kind of peaked at that point. That's just me. I mean, I'm, I've am i always been an Anakin fanboy, so all you need to do is show his face, and I'm going to be, oh, awesome, you know, whoa. But... I do really think that, you know, the first couple episodes are pretty slow. Third one kind of builds into the plot. Fourth one ends with Ahsoka waking up and seeing Anakin. Oh, internet breaking scene. You know, then episode five is just like the best in my opinion. I loved it. I could have spent so much more time with the Clone Wars flashbacks and all that. But I'm a Clone Wars fan. To those that have never seen the animated series, they probably had no idea what the hell was going on. There are many people that won't watch the animated series because they're a cartoon. They won't watch Rebels. They won't watch The Clone Wars because, well, I'm not watching cartoons. That's for kids. Well, sorry. That's on you, you know? So you're not going to understand any of the context about any of this stuff. You're not going to know what the hell the World Between Worlds is. You're not going to understand the importance of Ahsoka Tano entirely. I think, personally, Episode 5 was the peak, and I enjoyed it. I think they did Anakin very well. I think they did Ahsoka very well, but I think the time in which we got to see Anakin or Hayden Christensen was done very well, and it wasn't overdone, it wasn't underdone, you know, like with Kenobi, they just kind of squandered it, you had like two scenes with him, and I think in this show they made it pertinent to the story, and they made it make sense. I loved Balin's skull and Shin Hati, I loved their characters. Especially Balin. I think Balin was probably my most, my most favorite character from the show. And I think most people agree that the performance done by Ray Stevenson was beyond expectation. And it's still very tragic that he wasn't around to see the love he got for his character. Shin Hati, I mean, she was, she was cool. I think most people are just hyped about her because she's attractive, but... That's the way it is. I enjoyed the more stoic and mature version of Ahsoka, and I know a lot of people had problems with her, with Rosario Dawson's performance. I mean, me personally, hands down, Ashley Eckstein is the best Ahsoka. I mean, I've only seen two, but I very much more appreciate her performance versus Rosario Dawson's, but that's a biased opinion just because of the Clone Wars and all that and Rebels. I think from a live action perspective rosario dawson was a good choice i think she like i said before she captured a very mature and stoic ahsoka but i mean at this point in her life she's in her mid to late 40s so she should be more mature and she was also dealing with the trauma and the guilt and the shame that she felt pertaining to anakin so we kind of got kind of got to see that change and transition once she found her peace in the world between worlds slash fever dream or whatever that she was in when she spoke to him. So I enjoyed that. I enjoyed seeing Thrawn in live action, although I do have issues with the way he looked. 
nitpicky, I know, but they could have told him, hey, you know, you've got 12 weeks to go on a diet, lose a little bit of weight, or not look so decrepit. Now, I know he's in his 70s at this point in time almost, but as I've said before, I always picture Thrawn as handsome and attractive. <clears throat> That's just always how I've interpreted him in the books and all that. Although Lars Nicholson did a phenomenal job with the voice, I just think he's not the right physical adaptation of Thrawn. That's just my opinion. Overall, I enjoyed the show from start to finish, and I think that it did a very good job at getting people excited for Star Wars again, at least for eight weeks that it was on. Do I have high expectations and high hopes for the future of Disney Star Wars? <laughs> no. I would be a fool to do so. I feel like this is just a good time amongst what will probably be a continual decline. I know that's super negative, but you've got Skeleton Crew coming out in the near future, which who cares? I mean, am I, am I excited about that? No. Will I watch it? I'll give it a shot. The Acolyte, I don't even know if that's going to be a thing anymore, and even if it is, I have no desire to watch it. As, as per other Disney projects, we'll just have to see. I would always love to see another season of Tales of the Jedi or Tales of the Sith or whatever kind of faction or group you want to specify and tell a story on. I'd love to see that. More animated stuff with the producers of The Clone Wars. I'm for it. Bad Batch Season 3. Excited. But any other live, live action projects, eh, I'm going to wait and see before I get hyped. You know, it's pretty obvious we're going to get a Season 2, so I just hope that it gets better. I mean, there's always room for improvement, but I just hope that it gets better with season two. I hope that they really nail in the threat the Thrawn is because he is a big effing deal. You know, he's not your little Moff Gideon that was cool in the first two seasons. Then season three of The Mandalorian, a joke. I mean, as I've said before, and I'll say time and time again, you watch the first two seasons of The Mandalorian and stop. Don't watch Book of Boba Fett. Don't watch Mando season three because you're just going to be left disappointed. Point blank simple. As per, you know, the future of Star Wars, we'll just have to see. I'm, I'm going to be here for the ride. And if it's bad, there is a six other films and plenty of other media for me to enjoy to keep my mind off the bad stuff. Speaking of bad stuff, let's get into what I didn't enjoy with the show. Number one, why the hell did they make Sabina Jedi? Whose idea was that? Was it Dave's idea? Was it somebody else that told him he needed to do it? I don't feel as though bringing a character into live action, which is a big thing, especially when it's coming from an animated show that was on Disney XD that, you know, for children under the age of seven, I don't feel bringing a character into live action that was originally only an animation should hurt your opinion on that character. Now, I know it's subjective. I mean, these are, these are my videos, so it's all going to be opinion based. But I don't like Sabine anymore. I don't like that she is special. I don't like that she could have just been good enough as a Mandalorian. You know, there are dozens and dozens, well not say dozens, but there are a lot of Mandalorians that we've seen in the Star Wars canon. Jango Fett, Boba Fett, Din Djarin, Bo-Katan, Pre Vizsla, uh, Paz Vizsla, the Armorer. That's just the ones off the top of my head. There are a lot of badass Mandalorians that we've seen in the Disney canon. They've, the characters that they've created, not even not to mention what was already there, that are just good enough on their own. Why did you have to tell a story with it centered around Sabine being Force-sensitive when that was never alluded to in Rebels? I don't care what anybody says. Kanan taught her how to use a lightsaber as a sword. I mean, he didn't say, okay, to deflect bolts coming at you. Like, no, because if you don't have the Force, you can't do that. It's the precognition that you get with the force you know several examples of it have been in novelization forms where they can see in slow motion and then they can adapt or they can react based on where they see that uh energy blast coming from from a blaster or whatever if you don't have the force you can't deflect bolts so that's why kanan never said 
Okay, here's part of your training. We're gonna teach you to deflect blaster bolts because she can't, she never could. So why they would bring this up and act like it was there the whole time is beyond me. Like I said, it's my biggest issue with the show and it's taken everything I got to not be, to not just look at it like, oh, like I'm trying to accept the show for what it is because I really enjoyed the scenes with Anakin and I wanna look at that as like my head cannon, you know, cause like when something in Star Wars is shitty, I just ignore it. Like for, the, for example, the sequels, didn't happen. Fake news. I mean, that doesn't exist in my head, Kenneth. That's not Luke Skywalker. That's fan fiction. So I really want this show to, to continue the canon in which I've created in my head. But I just can't, I, I'm trying for the life of me to look past Sabine having to be put on this pedestal. Because why do you need to be a Mandalorian and a Jedi? Like, she was cool in Rebels. I, I enjoyed her character. She was a great supporting character. She got her own arc, you know, going back and reuniting with her family. Why did she have to be a Jedi, you know? And in the final episode where the whole time she has struggled with the Force, struggled with the Force, didn't have it, couldn't use it, in the very last minute when her life's on the line, she's able to tap into it, save herself. And then moments later, she's somehow strong enough in the Force to help assist Ezra in jumping from the top of the temple to the Star, to star Destroyer. Make that make sense, and I'll accept it, but because it doesn't. Anyway... I digress. I don't want to sit here and go on this giant rant, but that's my biggest issue with the show. And Thrawn not looking as great as he could have. And that's just a subjective opinion. That's not as big as the Sabine thing, but they could have been like, hey man, why don't you lose some weight? Why don't you get in shape? Why don't you look a little better? I know that's like a terrible thing to say because I'm not perfect looking, but that's just not the image of Thrawn I had in my head when it comes to live action. I feel like the ending was as good as it could have been. Yeah, they pretty much just traded spots. So, Thrawn won. Ezra is back with the New Republic, and Sabine and Ahsoka are trapped on this planet in this other galaxy. Obviously, in the next season, that will be fixed. They will find a way to get them. But, you know, I kind of didn't want the good guys to win. So, it tells a good story that... Hey, you had the opportunity to destroy this map and Ezra could have been stranded here forever and Thrawn would have never made it home. But because of your attachments and your care for Ezra, you led, you know, you let these events happen and play out the way they did. Can I fault her for that? No, because I think that's something we would all do. But look where it got him. At the end of the day, I enjoyed the show and for all those that enjoyed it also, that's awesome. But anyway, guys, that's all I got. I just want to get on here and talk about the show overall. Now that we had a little, a little break from it, a week to digest it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, check out more videos, and we'll see you on the next one.